The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today I'm down in Oxford County in a pretty amazing soybean field. It's late June, some tremendous yield potential here. And the big question now is how do we protect that potential? And I'm going to get some answers from my guest, BASF agronomist Ken Curra. We're going to get down in the canopy, we're going to talk white mold, we're going to look for flowers, we're going to talk timing, and how we can protect this crop using fungicides. So Ken, this soybean field looks awesome. It looks like it's coming on in a hurry. What does that mean for fungicide application? Yeah, so this field uh, in particular, let's talk about this one in particular, has a history of fertility. As you can see behind me, has some topography to it. So those hollows are naturally prone to white mold. You add the fertility into it. And these are also, you know, they're narrow row soybeans done with the seed drill, right? So they've canopied quickly in most of the field and uh, shot up a bit with that rain when you look at the nodes that I've inspected here. And yeah, so this is a field that uh, might be a candidate for some white mold management as well as just managing for yield with soybean fungicide selection. Yeah. Especially now, Kenny, you mentioned, you know, it was dry early, we've gotten some moisture here. That moisture gets in the canopy. Why do you got to start thinking about now from a white mold perspective? Yeah, and even though we're warm, you know, our studies generally prove that uh, that 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 canopy with that moisture in there is running about eight to 10 degrees cooler than, than what we're used to standing here talking above the canopy on a hot day like today. So pretty prime for, uh, for disease development in particular white mold, depending on the timing of that spore release. But if we look at the crop stage, you know, these particular plants, and I would say about 10 to 15% of the field, there's a flower on one of the bottom three nodes. So they're just entering the R1 stage. So it's time to think about managing them, whether it be for white mold or plant health yield management or both in the coming three weeks so that they're in great shape going into that prime pod fill and yield building period the last week of July and through August until they start to senesce and mature. And that's what you talk about, that two-use pattern. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, whether you have white mold in the mix or whether you're going for that later application for, you know, for that late season plant health and keeping things, that factory going, how, you know, talk about, I guess, the strategy between and the timing between the two-use and the single-use. Yeah, so I'm going to start with a white mold program and let's, let's uh, talk about a, a model to high risk white mold scenario. So these are fields with a history of white mold. The fertility and topography features, airflow features that I mentioned. Should also think back to 2014 and 2017 crop. 2014 was an awful white mold year and we knew we'd have to manage those fields when they were in soybeans for the next better part of the next decade. So look at 2014, 2017 crop records. If those fields are in soybeans now, if you're looking at, uh, you have a variety that's that's uh, got some white mold uh, proneness or, or risk to it, then we need to look at that factor and uh, make a decision. So if I'm looking at white mold management, again, preventative management to try to suppress white mold development from down within the canopy and that primary infection point which is the decaying flower. So we're looking at a true white mold product like Cotegra, premixed product of two different white mold effective modes of action and applying that basically between R1 and R2. I like to be a little bit earlier than later because once it's in there you're fighting the battle and then if that risk continues, so humid weather, frequent rains, moisture getting trapped in the canopy, the beans get tall and rush and lank and I always defer to the farmer you know your fields and you know the variety you're growing and your seed dealers seed suppliers can help you out on the variety aspect if you don't know and we can identify do we need to keep managing with a follow-up pass on some of the you know let's say 1.8 maturity group and later where they have that longer yield fill window versus short day soybeans in the central and, and eastern part of the province where maybe one pass white mold control is good enough in my territory I'm looking at two passes I want the white mold product in at R1 to R2. And then I'm going to follow up with a, with a Strabilion mix product like a Preoxor to build yield and build seed weight at an R2 to R2.5, which is basically flowers on either of the top two nodes or at R2.5, those first flat pods developing on the lower nodes from the first flowers that we see here today. That's the Strabilion timing for that two pass program. Final point, Ken, let's talk about, I guess, cost and return on investment this year. Obviously, you know, we've got some great soybean prices there. We've got fields with high yield potential. 
like this you know what's the investment in a year like this year yeah so i mean we're looking at some high crop prices again right depending on where growers have forward sold or if they're you know the market's still open i mean the contract price today for uh for soybeans this fall is just over 16 dollars, i believe so uh at a local elevator so and that's basically the cost of product for uh, for most of the fungicide products in the marketplace so it's one bushel advantage to get the return if we look at our own uh internal data at bsf from from commercial farmers fields from the ag solutions trials we've executed in recent years we see uh low white mold risk we get about a two bushel return from cotegra we can be north of six bushels if we're into moderate or high white mold risk and growers who manage white mold know that it's a pretty devastating disease and it is a disease of high yields right if we look at uh, the strabilion products at r2 to r2.5 our long-term trials over 250 commercial field trial data points over eight years uh, you know data is pretty undeniable at about 3.3 to three and a half bushel advantage so basically uh, you know cost of product uh, two pass program is going to be thirty to forty dollars an acre. One pass is going to be fifteen to twenty dollars an acre. So there's some nice returns to be had here for sure. Hey Ken, always great to have you on the Soybean School, sir. Thanks for stopping by. Excellent. Thanks for the opportunity, Burn.